to another episode of the Givology Impact Series podcast. Givology is a 100% volunteer-run online giving marketplace for education, which connects donors to grassroots projects and student scholarships around the world. Each episode, we share the stories, advice, and inspirations of social entrepreneurs and changemakers around the world. I am Sharon Murugaya, your host for today, and I'll be speaking to Nicole Haggerty, an Ivy Business School professor who will be talking about one of the courses that she conducts called Africa Service Learning. As a quick background on the program, as of 2016, it has been running for five years. It involves Ivy Business School students teaching their peers in African business schools using the case-based method. Around 100 Ivy students have now participated, and over 1,800 African students have obtained certificates of completion from Ivy and their partner schools. Nine African students have actually come to Ivy on exchange. To talk more about the program, here's Nicole. Hi, Sharon. Welcome, Nicole. Thanks so much for joining me today. Maybe we can start off with you telling me a bit about the program and what really inspired you to start something like this. I would love to tell you more about it. The program started about five years ago, and I think my inspiration was a combination really of two things. The first is my history, my family history. My father was born in Kenya, and he was his, his father had immigrated from India. So my father was raised there until he was about 18 years old. And I think the country of Kenya and the continent of Africa had always been sort of part of the mythology of my youth. My father used to tell amazing stories about his life there. I'd also, over time, pay attention to some of the challenges and difficulties that many countries in Africa have had, including uh, poverty and political instability and things like that. So I was really drawn to, I've always been drawn to the continent. I just didn't really have an idea for what I could do there. And then the second part of the inspiration, I, came, I guess, came about five years ago. I happened to meet a university president from a small university in Somalia at Ivy, the business school that I teach at, and discovered um, through talking to him some of the business school educational challenges that they have there. And I guess it just sort of dawned on me suddenly that there was a way that I could give back to the continent by creating a program that would bring the best of what our school and our students are capable of doing um, to uh, African business schools. And at the same time that we could be showing them how case method can really help develop students, business students, and their business capabilities there. It would give our Ivy students a chance to have an amazing experience, learn some important things about the world and important business things about that continent, and also learn a lot about themselves. So that was really, you know, my inspiration, partly um, history and partly the opportunity I have through the Ivy Business School to meet incredible students and to get a chance to live a teaching philosophy that I really believe in which is getting students out to the world to experience it. That's really great. I think it's such a great initiative. And I'm still coming to Ivy. I've never heard of anything like it as well. It's pretty unique, but it's also pretty demanding. And that's why I think it's not an easy program to run. And so I think that's why one of the reasons why you don't see a lot of schools try and try and do something like this. But when you see the results, you can't help but want to put the work in to make it, um, to make it successful and to keep it going. What would you say are some key takeaways for Ivy students who get involved with the program? I think there's a few things that are really important about what they gain from the experience. No matter what they think before they leave, even if they think, well, it's a cool place and I really want to see the country I'm going to, uh, whether that country is Ghana or Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, or Rwanda, sometimes they think, well, that'll be a cool place to go to. But I think what they really get out of it once they're there, and especially when they come back, is a deep, deep sense of appreciation for, one, the education they get at Ivy, a really deep appreciation for the fact that even though it seems like it would be a vastly different place, there is a lot that Ivy students have in common with undergraduate business students in any country in Africa, mm-hmm. really, uh, in terms of the cultural references, the entertainment they watch, the music they listen to, what their hopes and dreams are. I think they gain an appreciation that you know people are more similar than different. I think students from Ivy that, that go to Africa get a sense of what the business world is like there and a sense of the country they're in beyond just the media portrayals of poverty and starvation and political unrest and and war Um, and they see that there's everyday life and and it's wonderful and there's a lot of really interesting business things going on and they learn a lot about that and how their Ivy education helps them understand it 
but also things that their eye education can't teach them. So, and, and I add one final thing that they get. I think when they come back, their sense of gratitude for what our country provides in terms of opportunity people is, for people is really heightened and um, mm-hmm. so interesting to watch them sort of um, people that experience the program go through that realization. Yeah, that sounds like such an incredible experience. I know that you mentioned that students can sometimes be at a loss for words and ask about their experience too. So if you could maybe summarize the feelings in a couple of words, what would they be? Uh, I would say students would say humbling, um, exciting, scary, um, but uh, transforming. I think students would say it changed their lives. No, that's really incredible. I would love to hear about any anecdotes or stories you have from one of the African students um, involved with the project. Uh, Let me think. So we've had the benefit in this program of being able to raise funds. A fantastic foundation, the Charles and Rita Field Marsham Foundation. These are uh, uh, business people who um, own a number of business interests in Africa. And Charles and Rita Field Marsham set up a foundation um, that, that takes uh, funding and puts it towards educational opportunities for African students. And they've funded for the last three years, and actually now going into the fourth year, opportunities for three African students to come each year to Ivy for Exchange. So, you know, the first anecdote I can think of uh, relates to uh, African students um, getting ready to come to Ivy and getting up in the morning and getting ready to come to school. They come mm-hmm. January to April. And in London, Ontario, that means that they're encountering winter for the very first time in their lives. And uh, I, I can remember them talking with a, a great deal of humor about their experience in trying to walk to school this time, all the desire uh, that they have to get there, and how many times they slipped on the ice um, and fell, and how they felt they really pushed physically to get there. So those are quite humorous. I think the other thing is the stories they would tell about coming to the Ivy environment and working with Ivy students and seeing how how hardworking and motivated they are and the skill level that they have and really gaining a sense of co- accomplishment from, for themselves, that they can come from their school in Africa to the Ivy Business School and see themselves doing really well academically along with that group of students. So... I'm not sure that's a really specific anecdote, but it is the, the kinds of things I learned that I learned from them. The African students who are in Africa will tell amazing stories. One of the things, or often what they talk about, is that they had no idea that being able to participate in class would be so much fun. For some of them, they, they take the course one year and they come back the following year because they are so interested in what they're learning and so excited about things that they see in the classroom. The fact that they get to talk, talk to each other, talk to the instructors, really think hard about how to apply their business schools is important. They frequently talk about how lively the class is compared to their lecture-based classes. And I guess just being able to engage with things is really part of um, what they talk about. So I guess those are so the things that come top of mind to, to the things I've heard. I think it just really makes you reflect on your own experience. And then what I mostly realize is that sometimes it's really easy to take these things for granted. Like the students themselves, the ones who came to Ivy, they were just so captivated by the education system and the case-based method of learning. And you never really appreciate it enough. It's really a different outlook on things. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that's really true that at the end of the day, Ivy students, when they come to Ivy in their third year of university, third or fourth year, they're, they're with us for two years. And they go from pretty traditional ways of learning in university environment, and they get to Ivy, and then it's all about cases. Cases demand that you think hard and be willing to speak about your ideas and then listen to what other people have to say and learn on the fly. And so the critical thinking skills and the communication skills are, are really important. And I think you're right. We do forget that that's the, you know, that's an underpinning foundation of what we do. You kind of take it for granted because you just get used to it. And so it's wonderful to hear students who aren't used to it. When they have the experience of actually learning that way, how they just blossom. That's really incredible. What are some other benefits you think that are provided from the case-based method of learning? Oh, well, you know, I think beyond what the students learn, and, and it's significant, I can think of at least two other things that are really important. And in order to learn from cases, you need cases. And one of the things that's lacking in the African context is business cases about African business. So one of the things we've worked hard to do is have our IV students work with African faculty while our program is on, in place in the field. 
And they go out and find a business in the country that they're in and write a teaching case about it. So we actually, through that effort, start to collect more cases about African businesses that not just our program, but any business program in Africa or, and globally could use. And, you know, the African, there are many countries on the continent of Africa that are growing at a pace that is much greater than even China and India. And so some of the fastest growing economies in the world are on that continent. And as business mm -hmm. leaders, we need to understand more about it. So a big benefit is the creation of business cases that teach us a whole lot more about what businesses, what challenges the, the firms and organizations in Africa, in Africa encounter and how our knowledge of business, whether it's finance, marketing, operations, strategy, leveraging technology, how our knowledge can help overcome some of those challenges and create new opportunities. So cases are one big benefit. The other big benefit is the opportunity to help teaching faculty in Africa explore new ways of creating significant learning experiences for students. So it, the, re, the university environments in Africa are fairly challenged in terms of not really having a lot of resources and faculty who have to teach a lot. They have a lot of courses that they have to deliver. And the common practice, as it is not just in Africa, but in many places, the common practice is for faculty to assemble a set of lecture notes, to walk into a class, to deliver those lecture notes mm -hmm. and offer content to students, and then to be done. And at the end of the midterm and the end of the year to offer exams, to see whether students remember the content. But you know, we know that that's not the, the best way that students learn. And students need to learn many, many more things than just knowledge. They need to learn how to integrate that knowledge, how to put that knowledge into practice. And that's what cases can do. So the other benefit to university faculty in Africa is that we can show them and hopefully leave a new skill set for them on how to use cases in their classroom. And then, the, then what we're trying to do is enable African faculty and African students to carve their own path towards improved learning outcomes in business education. How do you see the program changing in the next couple of years? And what kind of changes would you like to see? Well, I, I would love to see that the program continue, and I would love to see it expand. And in order for that to happen, we actually need money. We need to be able to generate more funding to accomplish a few things. In my dream world, our program offers more structured workshops for faculty. I do a lot of workshops as part of my service to the schools that we work with. So I, I offer from half day to one day to as many as three days free workshops for African faculty to learn how to work with uh, teaching cases. But what I'd really love to see is opportunities for African faculty to visit and observe case teaching in action at Ivy. And so they, they have such limited funding, we need to find funds to help provide travel bursaries for faculty development for African faculty. That's a big need. Another need is we're creating case material, but there is a huge need for, and, and a big opportunity for African faculty to develop their own cases. It need not just be in business. This could be in health, media, and media and journalism, the, the hard sciences. There's all kinds of types of cases that bring real world practice into the classroom that could be developed. And I'd really like to fund an initiative to create case-based education and teaching excellence, almost like a center for teaching excellence for African cases in mm -hmm. Africa, and to help organize that effort so that the teaching development activities and the material development activities can continue and actually be accelerated. You know, a few cases a year, while it's great, it's better than nothing, it isn't going to create a kind of momentum for change that will really uh, help African business schools and African universities advance their agendas to produce university students and business leaders and leaders in their country who you know can take on some of the really difficult challenges that these countries have. I really hope that all of these changes um, come about in the next coming years. And I also just think it's really incredible that you've started something just so powerful. It's really great. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I have to say, I, uh, I've loved every minute of it. It's been a lot of work. But I have to also acknowledge I have had a lot of help. And the people I would like to thank the most are those 100 Ivy students who have gone before, who on their their efforts before we go and their efforts when they come back are all part of helping to build the program and refine it and improve it and create um, great experiences for the next group of Ivy students and the next group of African students that we work with.
What is something that you think you've learned or found to be truly rewarding after starting the program? I think, you know, I think what I knew, I think I always knew that this generation of young people at university, and I'm going to talk about the Ivy students in particular, I think mm-hmm. I always knew how interesting and motivated and how their search, their, their individual and personal searches for meaning, how important those things were. I think until I did this program, I never got to see it in action. And so what I've learned is, despite all the stereotypes people say about millennials and the millennial generation and all the things that we might hear in the news about that, I have to say that I meet young people 20 to 25 four years old, I don't know, sometimes younger, I suppose, sometimes older, I meet these incredible young people who really, at this moment in their life, want to make a difference in the world and understand that not not just the impact that they can have on the African students that they work with in the African schools, but understand what they get themselves out of making that effort. And so I suppose if there's one thing I've really learned, it's about the power of young people to take up these kinds of challenges and to have the courage to go to places that are really unfamiliar and the sense of collaboration and humanity really to take up causes like this and do a fantastic job. So I suppose that's the thing I've had the benefit of of seeing in action the most. Do you have any plans to travel to Africa anytime soon? I most certainly do. Probably in October of 2016, October and November, I have plans to do a presentation at the business, the Global Business School Network conference in Ghana in November. And that is a gathering of business school deans in across the globe who are interested in helping to develop business school education in Africa. So very excited about the opportunity to present there. And I'll be traveling to some of my partner schools in Ethiopia, Rwanda and Ghana to continue to build partnerships there. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, that sounds so exciting. It's going to be such a great experience as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Nicole, for joining us today. It was really great to learn more about the program and also about your experience with it. Thanks, Sharon. I really enjoyed talking to you and to Givology. Here is a reflection on behalf of Gareth Coombs, a student who traveled to Rwanda and explains his experiences. Looking back on the first month of Africa feels surreal. All of my memories of this period come from an angle above and behind my head as if it wasn't actually me experiencing them. Like it was all just a dream. When I reflect, I can still see the top of my head the first time I walked into class and greeted a hundred curious third-year Rwandese students. I figured it was such a strange situation for my brain to deal with that I had to take a step back to make sense of its current patternless surroundings. Indeed, my brain had spent the past year in London going to school. In fact, it had spent most of its existence going to school and learning from a professor, and it had spent almost all of its existence in Canada. To walk into a classroom on a different continent within a strange university with very different looking people and stand up front and teach instead of sit down and listen made for one astronomical brain wrinkle. It was wonderful. Thousands of brain wrinkles later, I'm sitting here and trying to pick out one single experience that changed my viewpoint, but the whole picture is so much more beautiful. Each little experience has weaved itself into my tapestry. I can still hear the pride in the voice of a boy selling eggs on the street during one interview because he had just married his wife. I have this vivid image of him twisting his wedding ring, the small brass band on his finger, as a familiar habit of comfort. I can still see the sweat bead on one of my students' foreheads as he prepares to present with his group for the first time. I can remember this fierce look in the eyes of our second year class representative as he discusses African politics and its history of independence. I will never forget feeling my heart twist into a knot when I looked into the eyes of a pastor and friend while he shared with us some very dark memories. I remember watching one single tear roll down his cheek. These kinds of experiences came out of the blue. They caused my brain to extend itself into regions and understandings far beyond what it had previously been capable of. Through this minutely short but infinitely dense period of time in Africa, 
I have gained hundreds of new friends with completely different outlooks on life. My capacity to understand what it takes to be a human has compounded exponentially. I really couldn't have asked for a better summer. Thanks for joining us today for the Givology Impact Series. Givology is a 100% volunteer-run online giving marketplace for education, which connects donors to grassroots projects and student scholarships around the world. To learn more and support our work, please visit givology.org.